Okay, this video is called, Are Statins a Good Idea? And the purpose of this video is I'm not gonna go through all this detailed stuff that you might get in a typical doctor medical lecture of statins. I actually don't really care about that that much. What I want to do though is help you understand the big picture of how to think about these sort of things to make you more intelligent in general about analyzing how to make a medical decision. So here's the point. Statins do have some real benefits. They lower blood cholesterol levels. They lower your LDL cholesterol, total cholesterol level. They also have some anti-inflammatory effects. They help stabilize atherosclerotic plaques and they'll sort of reabsorb the lipid in them and then the plaque will end up being more calcified, more stable, less likely to rupture. They have been associated with lowered cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. So all of that is good. There are some side effects here, some common, some rare. I don't really want to get into all that, but they're here if you want to read them. You can find all this stuff very easy on the internet. But here's what I find much more interesting. The idea of what are you trying to accomplish. So when you talk about what causes atherosclerosis, we know that elevated total cholesterol does. Elevated LDL cholesterol is true. Sort of a generalized idea that inflammation causes increased risk, but we're not that typically specific on that. But here's the point I want to make. I get the impression that a lot of people want to just obtain a quick fix, take a pill, and you know get their number down on their total cholesterol and expect that everything's going to be fine. And what I'm trying to say is, recently we've reviewed a bunch of lectures on the effects of a high fat meal on blood flow. And especially sat fat and trans fat, also omega-6 fats, but what I'm saying here is, they don't just cause one easy fixable problem of elevated cholesterol. They cause a whole bunch of problems. They cause blood sludge. They cause a form of blood sludge called Rouleau form, formation. They elevate myeloperoxidase. We just talked about it in a past lecture. That makes the blood more prothrombotic. They cause externalization in the red blood cell plasma membrane of phosphatidylserine. That's a phospholipid. Talked about that last lecture. It makes the RBCs more stiff. Um, the high fat diet causes insulin resistance, which does a whole bunch of negative things towards worsening hypertension, leading to increased AGEs, advanced glycation end products. When you're eating a meat uh, fat diet, you'll have a tendency to get more LPS endotoxemia. That's the gram, ne gram negative bacteria endotoxin. You'll produce more TMAO, trimethylamine oxide, that's atherogenic. From the lipid uh, omega-6 fats in particular, you're prone to lipid peroxidation. From the meat, you're prone to xenocyelitis. The reason I went through that whole long list is to make the point, with one pill, you can't fix all these problems. But if you go low-fat, low-sodium vegan diet, you address all of this stuff. Um, excessive dietary sodium typically goes with a processed food diet and to some extent with a meat diet. Simultaneously, potassium and magnesium come from plants. So if you're eating meat and processed foods and oils, you're probably going to be relatively low in potassium and magnesium. All of these things are associated with hypertension. Hypertension is a major atherosclerosis risk factor. Alcohol and tobacco are major uh, risk factors for atherosclerosis. High fructose corn syrup in large amounts, like from these sweetened industrial processed foods, is an atherosclerosis risk factor. Just being fat, obesity, estrogenic chemicals promote obesity. So these are all atherosclerosis risk factors. Excessive stress raises cortisol, which raises blood lipids, blood lipids and blood sugar. Caffeine elevates the same hormones as stress. That's why it's not a health food. Sleep deprivation elevates the same hormones, cortisol and adrenaline, the catecholamines. Corticosteroid medications do that as well. Okay, so what was the point of the whole talk? The point I'm saying is that most people who don't give it any thought say, well, I'll just take this statin, lower my cholesterol, and then I'm set. I don't have to worry about anything else. And what I'm saying is there's a lot more to, of a lot more reasons why a poor diet, high in fat, high in meat, high in oils, causes atherosclerosis. And you can't fix all of it with just a statin. Can a statin be part of a healthy diet and lifestyle? Yes, it can. But for me personally, you know, with my diet, my total cholesterol bounces between 90 to 120. That's super low. And so what I'm saying is when you do the whole low-fat, low-sodium, 100% plant-based, 100% vegan, you address all these problems. And don't drink alcohol, don't smoke cigarettes, etc. You know, we talked about that, avoid caffeine. 
But what I'm saying is you address more of these issues and you're more likely to get a good outcome that's healthy for all the cells in your body than trying to fix all your problems with a pill. So, like I said, this wasn't so much about statins as it was about the idea of saying to yourself, how can I win the game of health? What is going to make every cell in my body function better and make me less prone to atherosclerosis? So when you start thinking that way, you say, well, gee, I can solve almost all my health problems in one fell swoop by just getting my diet fixed, getting my sleep, um, managing my stress, and avoiding all this negative stuff you know, for health. That's a much better way to win the game than to think you can fix all your problems with just one pill.